In just 25 minutes, you'll know the foundational concepts to working with T-splines in Fusion 360. This video is sponsored by Things.com, a new 3D model community. Stick around to learn more about them and the second 3D modeling challenge, this time with more prizes. Before we start modeling, we need to spend a minute to cover some terminology. Fusion 360 is unique in that it offers three types of modeling all in one program. In the design workspace, you'll see that we have the solid modeling tab. Solid modeling is the first type and they represent solid watertight bodies. Surfaces are the second type of modeling. Surfaces represent infinitely thin surfaces, usually making up only the exterior surface of something. And you guessed it, the third type is T-splines. However, you will not see a T-spline workspace or tab. We'll discuss what defines a T-spline in a minute, but let's first enter the T-spline environment. The only way to enter is by selecting the purple create form icon. Fusion 360 will convert your T-splines into a solid body once you're done working with them. That is why they're located in the solid tab. In some cases, they'll turn into a surface body, which we'll look at later on. Notice how we're now in the Form Contextual tab. In Fusion 360, the term form is synonymous with T-splines. You may hear some refer to Fusion 360's T-splines as sculpting. Now this is in part because the T-spline environment used to be called the Sculpt Workspace. However, the term sculpting doesn't best represent the type of modeling that T-splines offer. It misleads many to think that they're working with a polygon mesh program where one can simply drag their mouse around to digitally sculpt things. Let's get started with this simple jack-o'-lantern model. This is a great practice object because the result is organic and there really is no perfect result to shoot for. There are three ways to start a T-spline design. The first way is to use one of the primitive shapes. The second is to start with a single face, and the third is to use one of the core modeling commands, extrude, revolve, sweep, or loft. The most important best practice with T-splines is to start as close to the overall shape as possible. This will help you avoid unnecessary issues or errors, and it's where I see most go wrong from the very beginning. Many attempt to start with a primitive such as the box. This method is better reserved for intermediate and advanced users as you often have to break or split the primitive before manipulating it into the overall shape. It takes more experience and strategy. Starting with a single face works best when you have a bunch of sketches to reference or for very specific shapes. And I recommend this for intermediate users as well. The third and final option is what we'll take a look at today. I recommend this as the best starting point for beginners because it's most similar to Fusion 360's solid modeling. Working with T-splines takes a different mindset than solid modeling, and this route helps bridge the gap. Looking at our object, we can consider the different ways that the overall shape can be formed as a solid. In our case, we could sketch out a side profile of the pumpkin, followed by revolving it around 360 degrees. Thus, we'll use the form revolve command, which works similarly to the solid and surface revolve commands. We need to first sketch out the pumpkin side profile. Now you can create sketches while in the form environment, just like we would with the solid and surface environments. Sketches are independent of the modeling types, so it's important to call out that they can be created at any point in your workflow. We'll first use Create Sketch, followed by selecting the Front Origin Plane. I'll start with the Line command, and I'll turn on the Construction option in the Sketch Palette. We're simply going to create an 80mm center axis, starting from the origin point. This will just help us start the model at a desired scale. Once complete, we can hit the Escape key to clear out of the Line command. Because the side profile of a pumpkin is not perfect, we're going to use the spline tool instead of an arc or ellipse. I'll find the spline flyout folder under the create dropdown, and then the control point spline. Now you could use either spline tool to get the same result, however, I find the control points make it easier to define the shape. 
We're going to start by clicking on the center axis near the bottom. Now a best practice with splines is to use the fewest amount of points possible. This will give us more control over the curvature. We'll click about four times to create half of the pumpkin, and we'll finish with the last point ending away from the center axis, which will leave an opening at the top of the pumpkin. To commit the spline, we then have to hit the enter key or the green check mark. Before using revolve, let's hit the escape key to clear all commands. We'll then adjust the spline points until you feel that you have a side profile of a pumpkin. Don't worry about this too much, as we'll use the T-splines to further define the shape. One important thing to note, just like surfaces, the form or T-spline tools do not require a fully closed profile. We can now activate the form revolve command from the form tab under the create dropdown. We'll select the spline for the profile. We'll then need to activate the axis selector followed by the construction line. If we now look at the model, you'll see that we're starting with the shape pretty close to the overall shape of a pumpkin. With just a few simple steps, we're much closer to our end goal than if we had started with a box primitive. This allows us to leverage manipulating T-splines to refine the shape instead of creating the shape. Let's click OK to confirm the revolve command, and then we'll take a minute to discuss what T-splines are. Looking at the model, you'll see that it's divided into several faces, which we can click on. Notice they are selected in blue. Each face is made up of edges, and all the edges converge to create a vertex. But let's simplify it and call these points. T-splines have faces, edges, and points. T-splines are a type of NURB surface. Now you don't have to know what NURB stands for, just simply know that it's one mathematical way that computer programs represent a three-dimensional surface. Some other CAD programs use different mathematical ways to represent surfaces. Traditional NURB surfaces require that all faces have four edges. T-splines can be considered a subset or type of NURBS modeling. The difference is that T-splines can have three plus-sided intersections, resulting in a T, or a star point where many faces converge. Essentially, all you need to know is that T-splines offer more flexibility than standard surface modeling, as they reduce the amount of math required to define the model. In return, that makes it easier to manipulate and control the surfaces. We now want to create the creases or ridges in a pumpkin. Manipulating T-splines will most often be done with the edit form command. After activating the edit form command, I'll hold the shift key, followed by selecting the two edges. The edit form command has a lot of icons and it looks pretty crazy, but it's much simpler than it appears. These icons simply allow us to move, rotate, or scale in all three coordinate directions. If I drag the single directional arrow, you'll see that I can drag the edge out or I can push it back in. However, you'll find that we don't have enough control to make the ripples. This leads me to the second best practice of T-splines. Remember, number one is to always start as close to the overall shape as possible. Number two is that we always want to use the fewest number of faces possible, knowing that it's always easier to add faces and it's much harder to remove faces. With that in mind, let's hit cancel to undo. There are a couple of ways that we can create more faces. In our case, we want there to be additional faces around the model so we can have more control over the shape. We'll go to the Modify dropdown and we'll select the Subdivide option. From here, we can select a face and you'll see that it divides it. In our case, we want to control the pumpkin all the way around so we can hold the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows. We can then double click on the face next to it, which will select the entire model. We want the insert mode set to exact, as simplify will affect the shape too much. We can then check the specify option, which allows us to define how many faces in each direction. Let's change the length to three, and notice how that adds an extra row of faces. Instead of changing the width, we'll leave it set as two. 
Let's click OK, and I want to show you a second common way to create more faces. Before that, let's talk about the sponsor, Things.com. Things is a new 3D model community that uses AI to scan and index every single model. That means you can search the site by similar geometry. Unlike other sites, they're not just relying on the title or the description. The geometric data is translated into code where it's then cross-referenced with millions of other models. That's why I'm excited to partner up with them for the second 3D modeling challenge where you can practice and share your 3D modeling skills. This challenge has more prizes in addition to the grand prize of the 3D printer. Be sure to check out the link below for the challenge details and be sure to upload as many models as you would like by November 7, 2020. Back in Fusion 360, let's turn on the symmetry. That's going to allow us to manipulate multiple parts of the pumpkin at the same time. Under the symmetry dropdown, we'll activate the circular hyphen internal option. Now internal simply means the symmetry pertains to this one part, while duplicate will multiply the object itself. We then have to select a face, which simply tells Fusion which T-spline body we want to add symmetry to. You'll then see that we have these numbered options, which can be confusing. Instead, let's use the drop-down selector in the dialog. Notice how the number we choose will dictate how the symmetry is applied. All these green lines signify that we have symmetry turned on at each of these edges. In our case, we're going to crease the pumpkin all the way around, so we'll want to use the 16-sided symmetry. We can then click OK to confirm. Remember, T-splines are made up of faces, edges, and points. All three of these can be manipulated. We want to subdivide our faces even further so we can push some of the edges towards the center, leaving us with a rippled edge. Under the Modify dropdown, you'll find the Insert Edge command. This feature lets us select existing edges to use as the starting point for creating new edges. Because we have symmetry turned on, we can double click on one of the green edges. Notice how double clicking selects the entire edge. We can then use the blue slider to position the edge, or we can type a location between 0 and 1. 0 represents the existing edge, and 1 represents the next available edge. Let's type out 0 0.25. We'll also change the insertion mode to exact to make sure simplify doesn't alter our shape. Notice how after I clicked OK, it inserted the edge at all of the same edges around the pumpkin because we have symmetry turned on. We now have enough faces that allows us to better push them toward the center. We'll want to shift click four of the edges, omitting the first and last edge in each column. We're omitting these so we don't affect where the faces converge at the top and the bottom. Again, because we have symmetry on, we only have to select them once and it selects them everywhere. We can then right click to select edit form. One quick note, to follow along without any issues, you'll want to select the edges that match the direction of the x-axis. This is so we can push the edges straight in without twisting them left or right. We can then either use the single direction arrow to push them inward, or we can type out a specific value such as negative 8 millimeters. Let's click OK and see what this looks like. We can also remove the symmetry with the clear symmetry command. Selecting the model and hitting OK will turn it off. Overall, this is a good start for the pumpkin shape. Another critical concept that I want to point out is the idea of T-splines being converted to a solid or surface body. To leave the T-spline environment, we're required to hit the Finish Form button in the toolbar. I want you to watch what happens as I select Finish Form. Notice how we're left with a gray and yellow body. If we check the body in the browser, you'll see that we have an orange icon for the surface body. This is because we left an opening at the top of the pumpkin. When a T-spline is not fully closed, it will result in a surface body. When a T-spline is fully closed, it will turn into a solid body. 
To re-enter an existing form environment, we can double click on the purple form icon in the timeline. Let's continue by creating the stem. If I double click on this inner edge, it will select all the way around it. Once again, I can activate the edit form tool. This time, we'll use the universal scaling icon in the center, which means it will scale the faces in all directions. Watch what happens as I drag this left or right. Notice how it scales the faces in both directions. I'll hit Command plus Z to undo, and this time I'll hold down the Option key. If you're on Windows, you'll want to hold down the Alt key. Notice the difference? Holding the Option or Alt key will extrude the faces at the same time, ensuring it doesn't affect the position of the pre-existing faces. Same thing for heading to the top. If we simply pull straight up, then it will affect the surrounding faces. However, if we undo and hold down the Option slash Alt key, it will extrude the faces without affecting the others. We can then use that center scaling icon to give a taper to the stem. Once that is complete, we can click OK to leave the edit form mode. At this point, we need to close off the top of the stem so we end up with a solid body. We'll then alter the shape a little bit more to make it asymmetric. Under the Modify dropdown, we'll find the Fill Hole command. We simply need to select one edge of the hole and it will detect the rest. Notice how we end up with this funky shape. To fix this, we can try out the types, and in our case, the Collapse method will give us the most appropriate result. If we now finish Form, we'll end up with a solid body. However, let's first adjust the T-splines. A common question I get is why can't I use selection filters with T-splines? The answer is that you can, but they have their own filters located within the Edit Form dialog. Notice the Selection Filter section, and in this case, we want to select the Faces option, which means we can only select Faces. We can then select over the top of the stem, which allows us to rotate or reposition the stem. Take a moment to experiment with this to see how you can alter it. You can even experiment with changing the overall shape so it's not symmetrical. Lastly, we have the option of using the Thicken command to define an internal thickness if we want the inside to be hollow. To 3D print this, I want the thickness to be about 3 millimeters. Under the Modify dropdown, you'll find the Thicken command. I'll select the body and type out 3 millimeters before clicking OK. We can now finish form and we should end up with a solid body. If I use the Section Analysis tool, you'll see that the inside of the model is hollow. But if we look at the browser, we do have a solid body. That means we can now use any of the solid modeling tools to add the final touches. This is the third best practice when it comes to T-spline modeling. T-splines are intended to get the core shape done and the details should be done with the solid or surface modeling tools. For example, we can create an offset plane off one of the origin planes, which allows us to sketch a face on the front. I encourage you to have fun with this and to spend time sketching out a unique face. You can then extrude cut the face out of the pumpkin. For the sake of time, I want to jump ahead to show you how I cut out the lid of the pumpkin, as well as flatten the bottoms. Starting with the bottom, we'll create an offset plane off the bottom origin plane. We can then use the split body command from the toolbar. This allows us to select the pumpkin as the body and the plane as the splitting tool. We end up with our split body in the browser and we can right click and remove this. To cut the lid out, we want to cut all the way around at an angle, ensuring the lid cannot fall inside. I'll first create an offset plane near the top of the pumpkin. 
Now on this plane, we'll sketch a circle with a diameter of 60 millimeters. We can then create a sketch on the side origin plane, allowing us to draw a straight line. We're simply creating a line at a 30 to 45 degree angle so we can surface sweep it around our circle. Under the surface tab, we'll use the sweep command. The profile is our line and the path is our 60 millimeter circle. There are two reasons I created this as a surface. First, we avoid needing a closed profile sketch. Second, we can now use the parametric thicken command to apply a clearance, ensuring the final 3D printed lid will fit. I'll type out a clearance of 0.5 millimeters, which is what works well with my printer. Of course, you may need to test your tolerances as every printer is different. We can then use the split body command just as we did to the bottom. This time, we'll have to remove the two extra bodies. At this point, we'll have to clean up the bottom of the lid so it can print separately and then we're done. I'll select the body and use the move tool to position this above. Anytime we have a funky bottom, you can try to select it and delete it. In this case, it ends up leaving us with a comb shape, but we at least have the proper angle so we can create a construction plane and once again split this body to clean up the bottom. Now we have a nice flat body so we can print the lid separately. We can also try to clean up the bottom surface of the pumpkin by selecting that, followed by the delete key. Because this one has a surrounding flat surface, it should automatically self heal itself, leaving us with one flat surface. You're now ready to save each body as an STL file for your slicing software. By the way, I've also placed a link with my STL file down below if you would like to print it out. In summary, we looked at working with T-Splines and Fusion 360, including some best practices and foundational workflows. We also looked at using surface and solid modeling tools as post-production to add the remaining details. This is a key point as you'll rarely ever do all of the modeling work in the form environment alone. Last but not least, I want to give a special thanks to all the new patrons, Bob, Gerard, and Kevin, and thanks to Billy and Justin for buying me coffee. Be sure to hit that red subscribe button for me. It's not only a great way to support me and the content for free, but you'll get to see the latest and greatest tutorials in your YouTube feed. You can also check out that playlist in the lower right corner to watch more T-Spline tutorials.